Hey everybody, it's Master Gallon Geist here, bringing you my review for the movie John Wick Chapter 3 Parabellum. And this is a great movie. It continues the consistent excellence that we've seen in the previous two John Wick movies. And I'm just glad that we have it, and I can't wait to see with what we've gotten at the ending what they're going to be doing going forward, because they leave it at a place that is more exciting. Now, granted, I thought that where they ended it was kind of where this was going to begin, but that's not really that much of a quibble. I'm kind of glad of how this ranked out so so far. And it just does a great job of balancing a nice plot with the great action sequences. There are four main set pieces throughout this movie, and they're just done and executed so well that you'll come to the end of it and be like, wow, it's just so well paced that it doesn't feel that you were dragging in any real kind of spots. So it starts off from the, uh, it begins at where we left off in the second movie. John Wick is about to be excommunicado. He's got an hour. He Once it hits six o'clock, he's deemed excommunicado. And he's open for business with the $14 million bounty on his head. So he's running around trying to figure out kind of what to do, and of course we see everybody getting ready to go after him, we see one of the uh, King of the Bowery's men going, ah, tick-tock, John, tick-tock, and he pops up a little bit later, but we see John and the dog moving around through, he's trying to get to the New York Public Library, but of course it's all traffic jammed up, so he gets a cab, he pays them in a gold coin, and says, alright, take my dog, to the Continental, he gives him a nice kind of cool pat and makes it on his way. He gets there and he's able to get in through the building and figure out where he needs to go to. He says a specific book, goes to it, and he evidently had this for in case of emergencies. He pulls out some gold coins, he pulls out this rosary with a crucifix on it that looks interesting, and then, of course, a marker similar to the one that he had to complete in the previous movie. So it's like, okay, he understands that he's got a lot to do, so he's going to have to use all of his card. But of course, even before he becomes excommunicado, this big assassin guy comes after him, and we get this great fight scene in the library as he's like using the books to his advantage and trying to take on this really big dude, and he just fucking annihilates him at the end, using the book to like break his jaw and just break his neck. It was just crazy. But, of course, he's really wounded, so he races off to a doctor that he can use before his time runs out. But, of course, it's time runs out before he can get it completely finished. He's able to finish it himself. He gets some of the medicine and, of course, shoots the dude to make it look like, okay, he stole this stuff from him when he became excommunicado. I was like, I like that. You see a lot of people still respect John Wick throughout this movie, and it's a small kind of thing, but it's a nice character thing. This underworld, even though it's going after him, still has respect for him. So, he then gets kind of cornered by another group of assassins coming after him, and he races his way into this kind of safe house place, and we see him deconstructing this gun in order to use it, and only fires off one shot, and this one dude to take him out, and then we move into a crazy ass knife fight that goes on. I mean, some guns are involved, but the main part in play are knives, and it's just fucking intense, like John getting kind of banged up, but him just like throwing knives at people, there's one dude having like so many knives in him as it just like, Poof! and you hear the thump, and it's like, son of a bitch, ending the fight by tossing like this hatchet into this one dude's head, it's like, Holy shit. So he moves on into the next portion of it where he gets cornered by these other group of guys and he goes into this stable with all these horses. And this was just crazy and just showed how tactical John is. He started using the horses to kick in and kill people. Kick in people's heads and kill them. It was just amazing. And also, hard as hell to film, and whatever CGI they used was very well used and done effectively, because you really couldn't tell that it was like over-CGI'd or whatnot. 
and even you need like a horse's ass to take out this one dude as he then runs off on the horse. It was just nuts. I I did not expect him to use horses in that way, but I'm like, of course, it's John Wick. He will use his environment to his advantage, and yes, <laughs> crazy ass action to see. So we see that he goes to this kind of theater esque place, and he holds up the rosary and with the cross on it and we go in and we see this woman watching this person doing this ballerina dance and everything and telling her to keep doing it over and over again and of course john has gotten through the security at that place on all right go on in and he shows her that we get a little bit more of john's backstory now granted it kind of went a little bit fast for his actual name but evidently he's in a gypsy kind of thing where he was like an orphan and they took him in and helped him and he's like listen i am owed this and it's your duty to come through with it, through with it and help me but see it's difficult because this director woman is also on the high table and she can't be seen completely breaking, breaking ranks with him but as we see throughout this movie, John is not unreasonable in his requests on these parts. He is taken through and we see that all these young people pretty much want to get free from all these suffering uh, that they've had to endure earlier in life. And she's like, hey, life is pain, life is suffering. And she makes them into ballerinas or into kind of wrestler people. And it's cool seeing them use these kind of grappling moves that John's been using throughout the movie. Like, hey, it's pretty cool. And she's like, all right, what do you want with this? And he's like, I want to go to Casablanca. And you're thinking, that's kind of weird. But, of course, she's like, all right, you pull this ticket, we're done. And he has her pull the ticket, take off the cross, and one of her people put it on the end of a poker, light it on fire, and, of course, burn the tattoo on the back, on his back that we've seen the other people in this organization have had. And they lead him off, and we see that he's gone to Casablanca. In conjunction with this, we see this new kind of person pop in, the adjudicator. And she's from the high table and then is investigating what's going on. First she stops in at Winston's and sees the Antonio's body and all that. And uh, dresses him down for letting John get away from killing the Antonio. And saying that he's got seven days to get his affairs in order. We also see that she goes to this other person named Zero and gets him to help her with everything that the high table wants and they then proceed to the king of the bowery and of course hit him for giving john the gun with the seven bullets and so in penance he's going to give he's got seven days to give up his place and he's going to get seven slashes and we see zero do the seven slash and like damn doesn't look like he can come back from that we shall see so we then shift over we see that john has made it to casablanca some people are about to take him out, but we see that one person from their continental is like, nope, the manager has given him amnesty, let him go. And one person tried to continue on with the fight, but this person shoots him, and I just liked, I would say that this is their concierge version. And I just liked how interesting he was. He didn't do much, didn't have many lines, but I liked the presence that he had. Okay, and... They take him, take John in, and we see that this is a woman named Sophia, and she's got these two badass dogs, and this is Halle Berry's character, and she's pissed off that John's here and doing what he's doing. He brings out the marker, and evidently he helped her get her daughter out of the game, and that was what John's marker is for her, and she's like, don't do this for me, don't do this to me, John, and he's like, listen, all I want you to do is get me to your old boss. And that's it. Nothing more. Nothing to jeopardize your daughter. And she's like, fine, whatever. But after this, we're more than even. And, of course, she sets up her dogs, gets them with, like, armor and everything. And they set off. They get to her previous boss. And we see them kind of hashing out kind of a little bit more background about the organization he's like hey this was the first coin minted here this was the first marker getting into the semantics of like the assassin order it's not really overdone it doesn't 
feel like it's overbearing or just like, oh God, we're listening to this. He's just kind of going into the history and talking about how wolves and everything are are going for. And John, of course, asks him if he can point him to the elder who sits above the table. So that way he can make amends. It's like, huh, this is interesting. And we're trying to figure out what John's motivations are for this. And it's like, okay, it's interesting that he wants to make amends. We're bringing up the whole thing of actions and consequences. And we see that the high table is really putting pressure on those under the table. So the high table really doesn't have much room to complain when other people are acting outside of their own enforced rules because they're the ones that benefit the most from them. Of course, uh, Sophia's previous boss kind of gives some vague directions on how to get to him. He's like, all right, thank you. But, of course, the boss wants a gift, and he wants one of Sophia's dogs. She, of course, is like, no. And he's like, find them, and shoots the dog. Now, of course, it hit the bulletproof vest, but, of course, we all know that people in this franchise do not take it kindly when you visit violence upon their pets. And then proceeds this great freaking shootout and everything as <laughs> she, at first, shoots her old boss, the dog clamps down on his groin and just starts ripping him a new one. They're just taking people out. Halle Berry is fucking shit up. Like, she completely holds her own in these fights and she's like, hey, he shot my dog. And John's like, I know. He <laughs> he just wished the situation had worked out a little bit better. The thing is, he's not really admonishing her for, like, yeah, the dude shot your dog. I love how they bring it up. Like, the director had brought up to John when he was being taken to Casablanca, like, hey, it's just a puppy. And he's like, it wasn't just a puppy. So they then have to get their way through this whole entire building, and it's just one great flowing set piece as we see the dogs just being tactical fucking fur missiles just taking shit out. Now, granted, Sophia is more of the main focus of this whole fight, and she really gets to shine here. I'm like, okay, what's John kind of doing? He pops up every so often, but it's her and the dogs just going crazy. And yeah, now granted, it is John Wick, but I didn't mind that she had her moments to just like take people out in the signature kind of styles of getting close and just fucking using all different kinds of forceful moves to get him into positions to just tap him in the head and be done with it. So they get out and they drive out. John, of course, shows that she has honored the marker, and she still is kind of pissed off at him, takes the water, puts it in her mouth, swishes it, and spits it back, and says, good seeing you, John, kind of shit, and John walks off into the desert. We see that he does eventually get picked up by the elder, and he asks, what do you want to do here, and make amends, and all right, if you want to do that, you have to pretty much give up your witness. And the thing is, he wants to be alive to remember his wife. So he has to cut off his ring finger and present his wedding ring to the elder and then be of service to the table. Now, they made a big show of him taking the ring and putting it on his person. So they're definitely alluding to other things going on potentially in the future with this franchise. I'm like, yay. And his first order of business to serve is to go and kill Winston. It's like, oh, geez. Of course, he recites the lines that Zero had, and he goes off. He gets back into New York, and he's getting set upon. But the thing is, Zero and his assassins, who have been going out throughout the movie, and, of course, wrangling everything up, getting the director to pay her blood penance, which was crazy, to the high table. And... His group of people are pretty great. They have, like, ninja skills where they appear out of darkness and then just kind of disappear. I'm like, ooh, that's pretty cool. And we get Zero and John having their own kind of confrontation, getting ready to go after each other. And Zero is essentially just... Granted, he is a an assassin in his own right, but he's a really big John Wick fanboy. And I really like that. And... We see later on that his two kind of lieutenant people are also very... Res they're not on fanboy levels of obsessed, but they respect John as well. It's like, okay, 
really like seeing that through line. So it's really crazy because this group of kids kind of gets in their way and John just disappears and is able to get to the Continental, but Zero gets there as well. Well, they have a crazy ass chase sequence on motorcycles as John is using this sword and guns to take him out while Zero, of course, is still chasing him and he's able to get on the Continental grounds. And the concierge there says that John's already there, so hmm, it's okay, you no business on the grounds. And they wait for Winston to call him in and of course he's in this crazy ass glass plate, glass portion of the Continental and says this is where we conduct usual business so that way we can see everybody's kind of hand and he of course hands John a gun to say hey if you're here I'd rather be taken out by a friend shooting me in the heart pretty much rather than what would usually happen and John's like nope not here to kill you it's like oh okay and of course the adjudicator comes in and Winston's not going to give up his power John's not going to kill Winston and that sets off the chain of events where they bring in the third great set piece. And that's the high table putting in these tactically geared motherfuckers. And it's just nuts. It's John and the concierge. Granted, there's some red shirts from the Continental also hammering in. But it's mainly to show the tactical effectiveness of the people that the high table sent in. Of course, the concierge tells John that here's like our armor in this better kind of bullets so they can go after but in the first encounter John and Kashiers have a hard time taking these guys out because their armor is very effective they can't really get through it so John has to get of course again tactical on how he does things he's got to shoot them to get them into a point where they're disoriented and then like shoot them in the back of the neck or like right underneath or through the helmets that they have it's just like crazy of course John's like this isn't working Concierge is like, this isn't working. They go back into the vault that Winston and the dog are at, and they're, like, they're both kind of pissed off right now. The concierge comes and takes off his coat, pulls down these shotguns that are uh, anti-armor, and they're just like, yep, let's get to work. And then we start into the next phase of this set piece, and it's chunky as fuck, because we see John come in and blast the dude's head off with that shotgun. It's just crazy. And, of course, the concierge gets his moments to shine as well. And I'm just like, yes, this is great. As they're moving and taking people out, of course, Zero comes in to effect as well towards the end of it. Like, John has got this dude under the water and just takes him out. But Zero's popped up. And this is kind of where we get into the last phase. I consider this the fourth phase because it's a different kind of fight than what we've been set up to. We had the opening with the other assassins and the knife fight and the horses. Then, of course, we had the shootout in Casablanca. And we had the armored portion. So now we get into the more kind of martial arts and ninja kind of effect. And John is very tired at this point. He has not had many chances to rest because, granted, it hasn't really been that long of a time frame that's been going on during the time of these three movies. Now, granted, that's usually kind of a problem if you're dealing with, like, The Force Awakens and The Last Jedi with how certain things work. But here, it's not done badly. We see that John has been just going through all these different trials and tribulations and he's kind of tired, but he's still able to take these people out. He gets out the first couple of them and then he gets into fighting the two lieutenants. And this was pretty cool because I think one of the, one or both of them might have been from the Raid series, and they're just crazy. They knock John down once, but they offer him a hand up, and they're like, hey, nice to meet you, very respectful, and they just go at each other. And it's nuts because they're using knives, but John then starts using his belt and just wrecking ass. And the great thing about it is, he doesn't kill them. He says, be seeing you, and just kind of leaves them. He's got them into a position where they're knocked out. Then we get, of course, to the Zero fight. And it's just really kind of cool because Zero is like, we're the same. We're masters of death and everything. But he's so infatuated with John that it clouds his judgment in how to go about this fight. So even though John is exhausted and expended at this point... 
he still has the upper hand because he's looking at the situation of, I need to take this dude out. And we see John disappearing and reappearing like the ninjas that have been a part of Zero's student, un, uh, student units. And he's just able to eventually stab him through. And he's like, oh, don't worry, I'll be back up in a minute. And John's like, no, you won't, as he falls down. It's just a great end to a kind of crazy, interesting character. I'm like, all right. So at this point, every so often the adjudicator had been calling in and pretty much telling Winston, you're screwed. But it's gotten to a point where she's like, all right, how about we parlay? They go up top to the roof and it's like, all right. Oh, this is why you did it, to show your strength and power. Because he's like, hey, you can take this, but this is New York. <laughs> you're going to keep it? She's like, oh, okay. Because they had deconsecrated the Continental's grounds to let business be conducted on it. She's like, all right. We'll reconsecrate it, but uh, there's still the problem of Mr. Wick. And which is like, oh, all right, I'll take care of that. And he shoots John off the top of the building as he falls into the alleyway. And you're like, that's really kind of weird. You thought that they would have a better connection than that. But I think Winston has had more of a plan than usual. I think he had been chafing under the high table and that uh, he had seen certain opportunities presented in here to get them into a better position of power. And I'm like, you will definitely have to see how that is because the adjudicator goes down and sees that John Wick's body isn't there. We see the TikTok man in the beginning of the movie has taken John and is being followed by his dog and takes him off and he dumps him down. We see the king of the Bowery is still alive and he's pissed off. And John's like, I'm pissed off too. Setting up like, okay, they're going to war with the high table for real. And... He's not just going to be by himself this time. He's going to have all the rest of the players who are like, we're tired of this. And we're going to make our own rules. So I definitely want to see a John Wick 4, man. And I don't care when it comes out. Take your time and just make it awesome. Because this has such a great potential setup of all these disparate different people. And coming together to fight the high table. But of course, you have to have John Wick in the center of that because he doesn't want this life. And he's kind of effectively trying to dismantle this crazy... Well, he's not effectively trying to dismantle it. That's not his goal. But he has introduced such an order of chaos that it's almost Game of Thrones just with the Iron Throne and all these people vying for power. And it's just cool to see how this could go about because John could take out the current high table and set up these other people below the table to take the reins. Now, would they run it ever any differently? Would they let John go since he had been such a potential asset to them all this time? You never know. I'm, those are the great possibilities that I would like to see. And I hope that we see more news on the front of the TV show of the Continental and anything else. This is such a rich world that had could have the potential to have such deep lore and awesome characters and awesome stories that I really want them to dive deeper and present some more kind of movies, open up the world to maybe some other kind of spinoffs with other characters or whatnot, and any kind of TV shows. Hell, you could go off the comic books. I mean, I know they've got a John Wick comic book, but like any kind of other media or whatnot. I, I really like this. This was a really well done movie, and... It just has cemented the fact that it's a really great action film franchise that has a great plot and a great world around it. So those are my opinions on the movie. Tell me what you guys think in the comments below. If you liked it, if you didn't like it, if you agree with me, if you disagree with me. Also, like and subscribe, and I hope you have a good day.